Fontaine on Morning Becomes Eclectic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It's an honor. I'm getting situated here to set the scene. We have uh, nine players in the room right now. We have two very different sets coming from Claude Fontaine. Welcome to KCRW. Thank you. <laughs> it's such a treat to be here. I want to put this out to the audience. Have you ever had the experience of stumbling onto an album or a piece of music that you never knew existed, only to find out that it had been around for decades. When I was young, coincidentally, I had that exact same experience in high school with reggae music. And our guest today, Claude Fontaine, had the same experience with Bossa Nova and Tropicalia and Rocksteady and Dub. And a true story of music discovery is the reason that we really wanted to have you in today on Morning Becomes Eclectic. Welcome, Claude Fontaine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell us about that experience. What was it like to discover that music and how did you discover it? Well, I was living in London for a short period of time, and while I was living there, I lived up the street from a pretty renowned record store called Honest John's, mm. and I'd often walk by, most mostly with groceries in hand, and meant to come and stop back in there sometime, and uh, one day I stumbled upon it, and I finally went in, and what I was... <sighs> But I, it was it was overwhelming, truly. Uh, when I walked in, the music I had I had never heard music like that before, and uh, I went in there every day and listened to more and bought more records, and was truly inspired by the reggae and the world music, the Brazilian music. That what is had. it? What is it about that music that you love? Um, well, for me, it was unfamiliar, but just as timeless and classic as jazz and blues and rock and roll, but. I had not grown up with reggae or bossa nova, and it was so exciting to me, and so fresh, and I was compelled to to write an album with sort of a, I guess, a love letter to it, I suppose. Well, did you, how did you end up in London? Because you're from right here in Los Angeles, right? I sure am, yes. Um, well, I, I went there for a relationship. Ah, as many of us yes. have. <laughs> um, yes, that, that, uh went sour after not terribly long, but I, um, I think what I fell in love with and um, what made what made a huge impression on me was was discovering that music when I was there. And I'm grateful for the experience that led me to that. Well, hearing the song, Pretending He Was You, the final song you played in that set, that speaks to a love lost or a love you want to remember. Is Was your relationship an inspiration for some of the songs? Um, I actually, I wrote that, yes, it definitely was, and um, I wrote that song while being in a relationship, and it was sort of an, an, an projection of the future of if I wasn't with that person, how I would feel. So yes, they're all true, true stories. <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, I related to that very much, but mm -hmm. I, I want to I back up a bit. Yeah. Uh, when did you start writing music? Because it was before you were you know, record shopping at Honest John's. Yes, I've been writing and recording and putting music up on the internet and taking it down a few days later. For, <laughs> like many musicians. Yes, to write a passage, yes, uh, for a long time. And um, I had yeah done that for years, but was sort of experimenting with different styles and genres. And it really wasn't until I came across this music that I felt... Mm, I think I, I'd like to try my hand at this. this You've found your home? It, it felt that way, certainly. What did you hear growing up? Um, well, I listened to a lot of jazz. I listened to Billie Holiday and Duke Ellington, and I thought I wanted to be a jazz singer for years, actually. Mm. And actually, I 
started playing shows in Los Angeles singing standards. Um, but for me, I needed to write, and uh, it fulfilled me ultimately to yeah, write my, myself. So, What is it about the 60s and 70s, this sort of era of music that you so beautifully evoke in your album that is meaningful to you? And how do you compare it to music that you hear today? Because there isn't, there aren't a lot of artists making music like your album. Well, I've always been in love with nostalgia, and mm. whether that's film or art or architecture, I'm. It's uh, always been a passion of mine, and the music I've always been drawn to since I was a kid was from that era, from the mm-hmm. '60s and '70s. So, I think that's also um, what compelled me to try my hand at this uh, music when I came across it because it was it was from that era that really speaks to me and always has. Mm. Well, let's talk about the album. Uh, it's called Claude Fontaine, mm-hmm. and uh, it came together in a really unusual way. Uh, tell us about that. Um, well, when I returned home to Los Angeles from London, I came with a few suitcases full of records, and I met my producer, Lester Mendez, and... Um, we then met my label, my record label, Innovative Leisure, and with the help from both of them, we created a band and found uh, these incredible musicians that I was so lucky to have play on the record and have here today. Well, these are names we've heard um, here at KCRW for years. Maybe you can tell us some of the musicians who played. Yes, um, Ayerto Marrera, who played drums. Who, He's a legend. Uh, truly genius, um, yes, and Tony Chin mm-hmm. and uh, Ronnie McQueen. And I heard you recorded at Chet Baker's studio. Yes, yeah, Sage and Sound. It's a true gem. We were, we were so lucky. We felt his uh, ghost blessing us. <laughs> I love that. It, did you, coming into it, uh, did you ever have any expectation that these legendary artists and the artists who are here in this room with us today would relate to the songs you had written and, and want to play on them? Because this hasn't happened. No, I hadn't, I, this is beyond my expectations in every possible way. I, I feel so incredibly lucky that they responded to this music. But did you just want to put it out there and, and think big and think of your heroes and see who, who else was touched? That's the only way I know how to go about anything, <laughs> I suppose. I love it. I love it. What about plans for another album? Have you been writing? Do you plan to keep in this vein? Yes. Um, yes, I have been writing. I've begun writing my second record. Um, and yeah, I'm constantly inspired. So who knows? But I'm, I don't, I, yeah, I just feel like I scratched the surface with mm. these styles. So I have so much to explore and learn. Well, I, I, let me ask you this, and, and I want to get back into your next set, which will be very different from the first set. We're yeah. going to get into the more the reggae, uh, rock steady vibe. Yeah. Um, have you been back to Honest John's? Because I feel like that's sort of the pilgrim, you know, that is the that is the place that it really just opened your heart. Have you been there? I have not, but I am dying to, truly. Um, I want to know if they are selling the record. <laughs> but even, I think we can probably <laughs> find that out. Um, or if they even know about it. Um, but it's it's uh, such a meaningful and significant place for me, so I can't wait to revisit. That's such an incredible story. And for those of you who I've never been to Honest John's, but it is a legendary record store, and it is a place of much music discovery. Um, and Claude Fontaine, thank you for coming to Morning Becomes Eclectic. Claude Fontaine here on KCRW. Excited for your second set. Thank you so much for having us. It's a real real treat for us and for the future thank you